This is just a test to see if this is even slightly usable. I've been feeling kind of... Um, small. I guess over the last year, I've just kind of felt trapped in this swirl of nihilism brought on by seeing everything that is happening. Like all the good and all the bad, just everything. And you see you see the the capital riots in america you see the terrible job that the government is doing in the uk you see climate change and you see people you know buying houses and working jobs that they like and uh, winning awards for things that you care about and it all seems to matter all of it and it just traps you there because if it all matters then none of it matters it just pushed me into this dark nihilistic place i was staring into the eye of the everything bagel I started feeling this, like, this kind of always present shame. Which is a very odd thing to feel if you think about it. Like, I'm feeling nihilistic and like nothing matters. How can I feel like nothing matters and also ashamed at the same time? What? I think I have self-help to blame for some of this. Um, I read a lot of self-help books, I watched a lot of self-help YouTube, which really got me through a difficult spot in 2020. Um, but I think it left me with this feeling that personal growth at an exponential rate was all that was good enough. Just getting by was not good enough anymore. And on top of that, I had I found a lot of success with one of my short films. And that, in turn, put pressure on me to do good work. And work that was not a significant improvement above that work, I just felt ashamed of. On top of that as well, I, I felt like I was not earning enough money. I'm still... I'm very much on the cusp here, of earning enough money to keep myself alive. I am in a very privileged position of having savings, um, which I have through inheritance, but I also felt shame about not earning enough money, especially given the fact that I am of pretty left-wing sensibilities. The fact that I cannot support myself, uh, that I'm relying on generational wealth to survive doesn't feel good. Can I sync on one of those? Probably. I mean, I, I don't sync like normal claps. I sync with the sound, so... Yeah. Oh, God. You'll never guess who saw the autofocus do something weird and was like, I don't trust the autofocus, I'm gonna focus it manually. And then proceeded to talk for 15 minutes with a shot that was out of focus. It's me. I'm the one who 
did that. Clarity is a bit of a funny thing in our current world. Um, because it feels like... Like, everything is very clear. Like, what what you should be doing, what you should be saying, what you should be believing. It's all... Like, spelled out for you in different places, in different contexts, in different times and, and ways, and uh, in books, and through people telling you what to think on the internet. But, like, it's just not the way that we experience the world. I think I, I, think I forgot that... Because meaning is a human invention. It is different for every person. So trying to think like what is meaningful, what is valuable, and applying this clear lens to it, it just doesn't work. Listen, I, I, don't, I don't have an easy answer here. My standard format for making these videos was always take something that I, I thought I understood and give advice to someone who perhaps didn't understand it and wanted to understand it. But I'm starting to realize that I have very little understanding of a lot of things. And I, I wish, I wish, I wish that this video could be me saying, here's how to find what it is that you care about. Here's how to find meaning. Here's how to find value in the world. But I don't got that answer. I don't think that I've really solved the problem that I, I had slash have. Um, but I've done so well enough that I've been able to make this video, or at least half make this video, which is the stage I'm at at the moment, um, which is progress, I think. I think it's progress. Um, so how did I get here? How did I get here? Well, first I stopped shaming myself for things. I wasn't doing anything that hurt anyone by spending a couple of hours on TikTok every day. What is morally wrong with getting up at like 9.30 instead of eight o'clock in the morning or like seven o'clock in the morning? Like, well, where, where's the issue? Yeah, like nothing matters. So why care about things like that? Just allow yourself to be happy. And the follow on from that is the fact that no one else is responsible for making my choices for me. Like, some people will try to make my choices for me. That is the way that a lot of society works. But at the end of the day, I am responsible for, for making the decisions that I am going to make in my life, which is difficult and means that I have to, I have to admit the fact that, like, if I want things to be better in my life, I am the one who has to make that happen. But it's also, it's also empowering because if other people are trying to get me to do what they want, it's not their responsibility or their job to make decisions for me. I, I'm the one who gets to do that. A couple of books pointed me in the, in the direction of understanding why everything kind of felt bad up in my brain. Um, but the thing that clarified it, which obviously for me it would be, was a film. A little while back, I went to see everything, everywhere, all at once. And, you know, there's a, there's a fight scene where people are competing to try and shove a butt plug up their ass. And yet, this is probably the most philosophically sophisticated film I've ever seen. Everything Everywhere All at Once is about a woman wrestling with all of the things that she could have been, but decided not to be. It's a film about regret. It's a film about how every choice that we make can lead to a differently meaningful life. 
and every place we could end up is equally meaningful and therefore meaningless. But we still have a choice to find the meaning in where we are right now. And I fucking wept at this film. There was a there's a really good line which hit me really, really hard, and I cannot remember it word for word, but basically there's this guy who is like kind and nice and a little bit goofy and like sticks googly eyes on things and he he's kind of positive and likes to have a, a bit of a laugh and cares, cares really deeply. And he's challenged over that, like, later in the film. He says, you may think that the way that I interact with the world is naive, but it's not naive, it's pragmatic. Because the only way to interact with the world and survive is to care about it. Because that's all there is at the end of the day. And caring is all that there is. I think that making any kind of change is inherently disruptive. It's a long journey that you go on when you try and change something about the way that you think or perceive the world. Potentially slightly more difficult for me because autism as well. I've been thinking a bit recently about the Steven Universe movie of all things. So Steven Universe, for those of you who do not know, uh, TV show, after five seasons, there was the Steven Universe movie. And in the previous five seasons, Steven has, has solved all the major problems, like there's no more plot to happen. So the Steven Universe movie, he's very happily living his happily ever after. I want everything to stay exactly like this and never change. Agreed. Here, here. Someone turns up, messes everything around, and he's not very happy about it. So for the majority of the Steven Universe movie, Steven is just like royally pissed because like, I, I should be having my happily ever after, you know? I did the work, I got where I wanted to get to. I'm struggling with my powers, the world's about to end, this is the story of my life! So he spends the entire film trying to get his life back to normal. Now all we need are Garnet's memories and my powers and we can all get back to living happily ever after. Which ends up being the thing that he needs to learn across the film that there is no normal to get back to. Life always changes and new people come into your life, new problems come into your life. And trying to get back to some better time when you didn't have these problems, it's just resisting human nature and the way of the world. All this happily ever after stuff has made me forget the first power I ever had. The power to change. You can live a happy life, but you're always gonna be dealing with conflict and problems, and that just needs to be a part of your happily ever after. Making changes regularly to solve the problems that you have in your life. I can make a promise. I can make a plan. I can make a difference I can take a stand I can make an effort If I only understand That I I can make a change So yeah, I am very much on a journey and very much near the beginning of it but I think this is a positive step and I feel good about it. And it's like, it's like the old joke about how many psychiatrists does it take to change a light bulb? Cause the answer is only one, but the light bulb has to want to change. <laughs>
the only purpose of me filming this little bit right now is I cannot end that video on that stupid psychiatry joke. So I have literally just finished editing the video and it feels good. Thank you very much for watching. I have no idea what the future of this channel will look like, but it's probably gonna look a lot more like me doing things that I think would be fun and interesting rather than doing things that I think will get, you know, seen and trying to build a brand because I tried doing that a couple of years ago and it's not for me.